being said, we printed it out so that you all know what the legislation actually says. Uh, so bear with me while I read to you all. <laughs> Hopefully you don't fall asleep. <laughs> all right. It's too important to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's too important to fall asleep. That's an awesome point. Section 1, Title 41, Chapter 9, Article 3, Arizona Revised Statutes is amended by adding Section 41 to 1444 to read, Privacy, Public Place, Public Accommodation, State Preemption Definitions. A. The regulation of access to privacy areas and places of public accommodation based on gender identity or expression is of statewide concern and is not subject to further regulation by any county, city, or town other political subdivision of the state. Subpoint B. A county, city, town, or other political subdivision of the state shall not enact or enforce an ordinance or policy that requires a person or business to regulate access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint C. No person or business shall be civilly or criminally liable for denying access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint D. This section does not prohibit a person or business from allowing access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint E. Any ordinance or policy that relates to access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression that is inconsistent with this section is void and of no force or effect. Subpoint so F. For the purposes of this section, gender identity or expression means either A. An individual's self-identification as male, female, or something in between, and includes an individual's appearance, mannerisms, or characteristics only insofar as they relate to gender, with or without regard to the individual's designated sex at birth. B. Any other substantially self or similar self-identification of gender. Subpoint two. Privacy areas means in places of public accommodation where access is restricted based on sex, including a public restroom, bathroom, shower, bath, dressing room, or locker room. Section 2, Emergency. This act is an emergency measure that is necessary to preserve the public peace, health, or safety and is operative immediately as provided by law. Does that sound like it's in retaliation to anything, by chance? Maybe. Maybe, just a little, just a tiny bit, maybe in retaliation to the human relations ordinance that Phoenix passed not too long ago. Um, so this is an emergency measure. It's about protecting people. It's about protecting cisgender women and children. But the reality is, is it doesn't protect people. It only in further puts people in harm's way. Who here knows what Transgender Day of Remembrance is? Awesome. For the people who might be watching who don't know what Transgender Day of Remembrance is, it's the day that we honor the people who were murdered for being trans for no other reason in the last year alone. Because that's how substantial the harm that we receive from people who are not trans is. That being said, one in every 30 or one person who is trans is murdered every 36 hours. That's a lot of people. And this only encourages that more people bring harm to us. The reality is, is we're not the ones hurting people who are trans. We're not the ones attempting to criminalize them because, you know, SB 1432 didn't make it, but it was still an attempt. We're not the ones trying to do those things. It's people who are not like us, people who think that they are better than us for no reason, who are doing these things. The reality is, is that this bill isn't just affecting trans people. It targets trans people, but it doesn't only affect trans people. It affects everyone who looks quote unquote different. This could be the cancer patient who doesn't have any hair. This could be the metalhead who has long hair. <laughs> this could be the person with a lot of piercings. It's not just trans people who have gender identities. It's not just trans people who express their gender. We all do. We express our gender by the way that we walk. We express our gender by the way that we talk. We express our gender by the clothes that we wear or do not wear. This is the language by which we show ourselves to the world. And so and the reality is, is my right to expression includes gender expression, does it not? Yes. yes. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of I happiness is very that. difficult if you are not allowed to pee anywhere. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it is very difficult. <laughs> my right to privacy does not stop at what is behind my clothes. My right to privacy does not stop at my personal documents, which is none of the business of the people who own businesses of the restrooms I use. And anyway, and Nicholas Love brought up a wonderful point, and he, he said he was writing an essay. I don't mean to steal your idea. Um, <laughs> I don't, oh, you're behind me. And he said, who knows what's underneath that skirt on the bathroom door anyway? <laughs> Has anyone asked the girl on that sign? <laughs> Nobody's asked her. There's this assumption that you must be not trans until you are outed as trans. And that is not true. We walk among you, people who aren't trans, and some of us look different than what you expect. <laughs> and we love it, and we are proud, and that is okay. So that being said, I'm gonna have some people come up and share their experiences. Some experiences are of parents, of artists, of people that you wouldn't expect to be trans, myself included. Um, most people, when I walk into a bathroom, don't think, oh, well, that guy has female on his birth certificate. Most people, when I out myself as trans, think, really? Because when most people think of trans people, they think of drag queens. And most people don't realize that people like me exist. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna welcome up Nicholas Love. He's an awesome trans advocate and he's gonna share his experience with you all.